Now this story started with a young girl, not much older than my oldest daughter right here, in Israel. And anybody know the name of the little girl? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. She's just getting it. And Mary, a regular girl like, like yeah, one of you guys, but something extraordinary happened to her. She was visited. <laughs> we can I don't know if this ever happened to you or not. But she was visited by. Awesome. Yeah. An angel of the Lord, a messenger, yeah, came to her That's and cool. said, yeah, Now, <laughs> when the no. first thing the messenger said to her, the angel said was, Don't be afraid. And do you know why the angel said, Don't be afraid? Anybody know why? Because what would happen to you if an angel came to you? I'd be scared. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. And you'd be right. And said, so Don't be afraid, Mary, because you are blessed above all women, because in you, in your womb will grow the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that the Son of God is going to be in, in your womb. You're going to give birth to this child. And Mary said a very intelligent question. She said, how could this be? How could this be? Because I've not, I've, I've, I'm just a, I'm just a young girl. Okay, I'll leave it at that. We've got, you know, PG audience here. So how could it be that I could become pregnant? I said, because the child is from the Holy Spirit. Now, Mary had a choice. She could, she could say, oh, no, this is, no, 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 I had, I had too much falafel last night, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, you know, something's wrong with me, I got the stomach virus, I'm, I'm hearing things. Or she could do something much harder, something that Christmas is all about. She could, see if you see what it is, she could. She could believe. Now, what is she going to believe? People believe all kinds of things. People say, oh, you, at church, you just want us to believe. No, we don't want you just to believe when you believe the right things. We want you to believe. Believe what? There's a three letter word. God. What are we going to believe? Believe what God... Believe what God said. And you know, that's really the message of Christmas. Believe what God said. God said that a young girl, a virgin, would be with child. And she believed it. And as a result, well, a couple things happened. One, she, uh, let's just say she was with child, if you know what I mean, and started to show. And she also became blessed among all women. I, I invite you to think about any other woman anywhere who's more blessed than Mary, more beloved, more that people know about her and have heard of her. And she got to have God inside of her. Actually, we get to have God inside of us too, but I'll talk about that in a second. Now, Mary was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. And Joseph now had a big problem. And the problem is this, that his fiance is pregnant. Now these were not the days of Dr. Phil and Oprah where you take the pregnant teens and you, and you cheer them on and, and give them all kinds of government programs and all of that and say how great you are. That was for you guys. Um, and uh, in, in these days, you know what they would have They would have stoned her to death for this. So Joseph, uh, he thought that you know people would think either he got his girlfriend pregnant, or worse, that someone else got his girlfriend pregnant. Either way, it would have dishonored his family name. So he just decided that he was just going to get rid of her. You know, just say, you know, it's not working out. You know, we, we, we had one of these conversations. You meet with your your boyfriend or your girlfriend. It's, it's, it's not you. It's me. You know, and this is not going to happen anymore. I'm sorry. And that's that's what he that's what he intended to do. But while he was sleeping, he had a visitor too. Anybody know what it is? An angel of the Lord. An angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to marry Mary because the baby in her womb is no ordinary baby, but is the child of God. And now Joseph had a choice. He could do the easy life of just finding some other nice girl, you know, another nice girl and, and, and make life easy and not have to tell everybody, oh yeah, this is my pregnant fiance. It was of the Holy Spirit. I mean, come on. You know, that's going to be tough. But instead he decided to believe 
what God said. And as a result, he got to become the adopted father of God himself, of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How cool is that? Now, I have the privilege of being an adopted daddy. I adopted a baby, and I love that. And we're, Lord willing, we're trying to adopt another one, my wife and I. But as wonderful as my adopted daughter is, and she is, right here, um, she is wonderful. She's not the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Joseph, because he decided to believe what God said, he got to be the, the, the adoptive father of, the, of, of Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. And he's still spoken of to this day. Now, there were other uh, people outside. There were, uh, there were some shepherds. And shepherds, what do shepherds watch? Sheep. That's right. And what does sheep say? Come on. Who wants to tell me what a sheep said? No, no, you're, you're you I can't let it be all my kids. What about you? <laughs> hey, that was pretty good. That wasn't bad. And they were watching the sheep. And guess what? There was a busy, some busy angels that day, let me tell you. Some angels came and oh, many things. And they said, they said, hey! They said, I give you great tidings, great joy for today, today, not tomorrow, not a week from now. This day in the city of David was born the Savior, the Messiah. These are people, these the people have been waiting for him, for the Messiah for years. When, when, Lord, when will you send the Messiah? When will you deliver us? And they, the angel comes and says, today, and you will find him, you'll know, because you'll go to a manger and you'll find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now, they could say, you know what, I think we had a little too much Manischewitz, and we're not, you know, seeing things clearly. Or they could believe what God said. And because they did, they found the baby just like what the angel of God said. Found him exactly as, as predicted. And they got to be of the first people. How, how many people here have had the privilege of holding a newborn baby? Have you ever done that? Oh, was it, has it been your own baby? Has it been your own grandchild? I mean, how cool is that? Right? But imagine being able to hold the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, God in the flesh. The Bible says that the Word uh, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And that's who Jesus Christ is. And these shepherds had the privilege of, of doing that. Wow. Wow. But not just in Jerusalem, but far away in Babylon. Many people, biblical scholars, believe that's in present day Iraq or Iran. They were wise men from the east. And they were taught hundreds of years before, most likely from the prophet Daniel. He's one of the writers in the Old Testament. And, and they knew that the Messiah was coming as well. And they knew it, that there would be a supernatural star to look for. Us. And the star would guide them. Now, these people were actually not just white and calm wise men, but they also they were kings. You know, they, they, they were kings in their own right. And they were very wealthy. And uh, you know what? They, they have to close up shop and travel for, for months and, 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 and longer by camel from Babylon to Israel. And we have to do this and, and give up our incomes and give up our families and go travel this, this long distance. There's no airplanes. There were nothing to, tra to get them there. Uh, and, but they did it. You know why? Because they decided to believe what God said. And this star took them right to the stable, or to the home at that point, where uh, the young baby was. Um, some people, uh, at this time of year, you see documentaries and they say, oh, the star was probably, this is a comet that comes, you know, every, you know, every 400 years and whatever. You know what? This was not a comet. This was not a natural phenomena. Comets don't go from Babylon to Jerusalem at the same speed that you go and then stop in front of a particular house. They don't do that. This did. This was a miracle. And you have a choice. You can say, yeah, it's a nice little story. Or you could believe what God said. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking this next person is going to believe what God said because all these other people did. And he didn't. This is King Herod. He was a king. He was also Jewish. He was put in position by the emperor of Rome, Caesar, who was also a king. They had sub-kings back then. And uh, he wasn't too excited about hearing about this king of kings who was born. Uh, because he liked his, his government job, he liked his position, and he uh, wanted to know. So what he did was, this is extraordinary, this, blo this blows my mind. He actually got the Jewish priests and said, 
where is this Messiah to be born? And they knew exactly where, because they studied the scriptures. And there's a book in the Bible, a prophet, his name is, oh boy, my cake is getting a little thick now. His name was Micah. And Micah, in the fifth chapter, in the second verse, says exactly where the king of kings would be born. It says, you, Bethlehem, are, are blessed, because from you will come the king of kings and lord of lords. Not only that, but the verse says, you know, Herod's going to die someday, and so would Caesar, and all kings die, and all of us will die. But this king is going to be different, it says in Micah 5, 2, can you check it out? It says he will be eternal, never die. This is going to be the king beyond kings, the savior. And Her it, now, what's amazing about this is that it was predicted, the town, the town, huh, anybody know how many years? 700 years before Jesus was born, Micah wrote this down. And that's one of the ways we can believe what God said. We can believe the Bible's true because of prophecy that came true. Then you could say, yeah, maybe that's a good one. You know, even a blind squirrel gets a nut every once in a while, right? But do you know that regarding Jesus Christ, in the Hebrew Bible, there are over 3 hundred prophecies that came true. Prophecies like that he would be from uh, the line of King David. Prophecies like that he would have uh, his hands and his feet pierced in Psalm 22. Now what's remarkable about that one is that one was written about a thousand, uh, about 800 years before Christ. And back then, there was no crucifixion. It never, been ex it never existed back then. It wasn't invented yet. And yet he wrote that the King, the Messiah, would have his hands and his feet pierced for us. It says in Jeremiah 31 that there would be a new covenant coming. There are over 300 Bible, Bible prophecies. And I bet, you know, now the way I think about it is, if I saw 300 prophecies that all came true, well you've got to believe. But here's a sad thing, is you can have all the proof in the world, but if your heart is dark, then it doesn't matter. A lot of people say, oh I'll believe in Jesus, I'll believe in God if you can prove it to me. Well we can prove it to you. Okay? I can prove it to you. This building back here didn't build itself. And even though I've never met the architect and the builders, I know with 100% certainty that there was a builder because the building is proof. You are proof that there is a God because you exist. You are the creation and so am I. There has to be a creator. Our bodies are so complex. There is Bible prophecy that has come true. I can give you all the intellectual things that you need to know to believe, but if your heart is dark and you don't want to believe, then you won't. It's not about, it's not about the mind. There's, there's plenty of good evidence. It's about do we want to believe what God said and not have our own way? Because God says some hard things about us. God says that we, you and I, have this problem. And it's called sin. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I'm not, people aren't born sinners. Who has a newborn baby or did at one point? Who had to teach them to be naughty? No, 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 stop giving to other people. No, no, hoard to yourself. Stop sharing again. You know, no, no. We're born with one word on our mind, and that's me, me, me. We are all sinners. How many, God says you shall not lie. Who here has, who here has ever told a lie? Hand up. Anybody without a hand up is either is a paraplegic or a liar. So you just broke God's law by, by lying now. We've all lied. We all have. We've all stolen. Jesus said if you hate somebody, then you've committed murder. Some of you might be committing murder against me right now. I hope not. But that's God's standard. We have all sinned. Every one of us. And so what that sin does, it puts a big separation between us and God and we cannot get there. So here's what man does. Man says, I know what I'll do. I'll try to earn my way to God. I'll be religious. I'll go to church, and I will be nice to the people. I'll give to the poor, and I'll be nice to my kids, and I will work my way up to God. The problem is there's a hard ceiling there because it's sin. And we know this. This is true. If you were a criminal, and we all are because we've all broken God's law, and you, and you have, you have uh, kidnapped a child and murdered a child, and what would... It, what would it do, what good would it do to you if you went to the judge and said, Judge, yes, I'm guilty, but I want you to know all the children I never did that to. 
There's lots of children I've been kind to. And plus, I've been, I've been good. I, I, I've never robbed anybody. I've never broken and entered into a house. I've never uh, uh, cheated on my taxes. There's a whole lot of, Judge, why are you focusing on the, the one thing? You know, look at all the good things I've done. No, no, no. All it takes is one law that you break and you become, you are a lawbreaker. I have to tell you, because I love you, that we are all lawbreakers, every one of us, and we cannot make it to God. But here is the great news, and here's the best part. Because God loves us, for God so loved the world, He gave His Son. The Bible says that, that um, while we were dead in our trespasses and sin, Christ died for us. It says that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God came to us. We can't go to Him. He came to us, and He was born. This baby in Bethlehem is no ordinary baby. He is God in human form. And he came to us. And he was, and get the, he never sinned once. Never. He was perfect. You know, what would you do with a perfect person? What would you do? Would you, would you give them a banquet? Would you put them on the cover of Life magazine and make them the person of the century? Would you give them a parade? No, because the Bible says that we're so sinful that we hate the light. And we love darkness. And so what we did was, we put him on a cross and we put nails in his hands and nails in his feet and just to make it worse we put a crown on his head with thorns that went into his brow and and and, and made him bleed that's what we did to the perfect god you might say oh the romans did that two thousand years ago no we all did that whenever we sin we we put nails into christ he died for for sinners of all times before him after him always we're all guilty but what I want to share with you is the greatest Christmas gift I could possibly give you. And that is how to be forgiven of your sins. And it's really easy to remember. And I'm so glad that God is so good. He's so kind that even someone like me can remember this. So if I can do it, you can do it too. The cross. What letter of the alphabet does it look like? T. That's right. And I want you to remember the number two. And that begins with a T. When you see a cross, and you know what I think is great? I think it's great that the electric company in the United States has made sure that they put crosses up all over the country. So whenever you drive, you see crosses. And I'll remind you of the T. Two things you must do. The first begins with a T. You have to turn. You turn from your sins. That doesn't mean that you have to be perfect, because nobody's perfect. No Christian is perfect. But I can tell you this. No Christian, if you're born of God, will you ever sin again happily. It hurts you to sin. You hate it. Your attitude changes about sin. It's called repentance. Jesus said you must repent in order to see the kingdom of God. The other T stands for trust. What's your trust in? When you die and go to heaven and go before, stand before God and say, I want to get into heaven. He says, why should I let you in? And you say, well, because I was president of the PTA and because I raised children well and because I, I, I didn't hurt anybody intentionally. No, 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 it's not going to work because we're all sinners. You need to trust in Christ. Turn from your sins, trust in Christ. That's exactly what Jesus said in the Gospel of Mark. The very first thing that's recorded that he ever said is he said, repent and believe the Gospel. Repent means turn. Turn, believe the gospel means trust. So what I would love for you, and if you do that, then you become you become born again, a new creation, and God puts the Holy Spirit in you. Remember we said Mary had God inside of her? Well, we can have God inside of us. The Holy Spirit is put inside of us, and we become a new creature. We become born again. Now, why should you believe a man who was put on a cross? Because you might say, if you're a historian, any, any historians around here? You might say that hundreds of thousands of men uh, were crucified at the time of Christ. You're right. They were. So Jesus is just another, right? No. He's very different. Because that stone that, that was over his grave, it got rolled away three days later. And I know it's Christmas time, not Easter. But what do we celebrate at Easter? That Jesus, he rose from the dead. And you know what, there are even some people who can raise from the dead. You know, we have people that, you know, they, they flatline in hospitals and something happens and they come back. So even that's not completely unique. But nobody's ever done this. In John chapter 2, Jesus said that destroy my body and I will raise it up. He raised himself from the dead. Now, I don't know a lot of things. What I do know is this. If anybody can be dead for three days and start to stink and all of that, and then from his own power, breath, and he gets up, and he walks among us and, and ascends, 
you listen to that person. Because Jesus rose from the dead, it means a number of things. It means there is life after death. People say, is there life after death? I wonder. Yes, there is. It's in heaven or it's in hell. And Jesus was so concerned about hell, he spoke about that more than anything. He doesn't want you to go there. You don't want to go there. It's a horrible place. It's a horrible place. But because Jesus rose from the dead, you can have hope. You can be saved if you turn from your sins and trust in the Savior. It also means that Jesus has authority. We can believe what God said because of the resurrection of Christ, because of the prophecies, and because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Please, I beg of you, please consider these things. There's no more important Christmas present than receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you go to a Bible-believing church that teaches this, then praise God. Keep going. We don't want to take you away from that. But if you don't go to a Bible-believing church that teaches the message of Christ, well, we'd love for you to come with us. Even if you don't believe, it's okay. You know, we'd love for you to come. We're answering, we'll talk with you. Uh, we're Lifeway Church. We meet at the Hood School. Uh, we, we start at 10 o'clock, but we, uh, we encourage you to come at 9.30 because we have fellowship time. We've, you know, we got coffee and all kinds of stuff like that. And we'd love to get to know you and, and, and help you in any way that we can. Even non-spiritual ways. We can help you with food. We can help you with whatever we can help you with. That's what we want to do. We live for that. Um, we have some refreshments over here, some hot apple cider, some, some cookies, the way my Colombian pastor says it, cookies. And uh, we've, got some, we've got some goats you can pet so, and feed. So uh, thank you so much for your attention. I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And I do pray that you will receive the Lord Jesus Christ. The goats are gone. I'm sorry, the goats have left the building. Um, maybe one of my kids will go in there and go, bah. So, uh, uh, but we wish you a Merry Christmas and then you will know Christ. You want to do bad? What do you want to do? Yes, you can have some water. The water right over here, it's Ask a girl that can help you, okay? Okay. This was not part of the presentation, ladies and gentlemen. I love you. Anyway, uh, God bless you. Thank you for your attention. Merry Christmas. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Thank you.